name is Carl Schoonover and I teach at the University of Warwick and with my collaborator Rosalind Galt who is a professor at King's College in London we're working on a project about queer cinema in the world and we've been visiting different film festivals around the world and thinking about how cinema allows alternative spaces for being in public for not just LGBT people but also for all sorts of people that are interested in challenging traditional ways and we have co-authored a book for Duke University Press that looks at different practices of not only queer filmmaking and aesthetics but also different practices of thinking about cinema, consuming cinema, and so for us, the spaces of interaction at Sicilia Queer are really interesting and exciting because they enable different forms of being together socially that wouldn't happen otherwise. We participated in this, this colloquium, a symposium that was about uh, queer festival programming and the politics of the queer um, film programs around the world at Manchester Metropolitan. And there I met Andrea and heard more about queer Sicilia and I knew that we really needed to come to see the festival and to participate in the events. classes on contemporary world cinema with a particular interest in issues of gender and sexuality. And with Carl here, uh, I'm researching uh, global queer cinema and the, the ways in which uh, forms of alternative cinemas circulate in the world. So for, um, for us to come to Queer Sicilia has been really fascinating. Um, both to see the really diverse kinds of films that are being shown, the audiences that we have around us. So we, we saw a really interesting Brazilian film which was very experimental and then we come here and there are lots of different kinds of people and their children and their dogs and it's an extremely um, open social space uh, which, which we find very, very kind of engaging and warm and it places cinema in a wider context. I think this is something that we've, during our research, we've discovered that a lot of programmers and filmmakers are really afraid of all queer film festivals becoming the same, or all queer films becoming the same. It seems to be something that is very close to the heart of people in the queer film community, that we should have difference and diversity and a range of, of models. Partly because each festival will be located in a particular culture and it, it should reflect the, the needs and the interests of the, the, the people in that culture, the different queer communities, um, or the different politics of, of that particular place. Um, but also beyond that, I think, there is the idea that the Queer Film Festival perhaps does something different from the very uh, what is now a very conventional corporate um, circulation of art cinema in the world and that the queer festival might be a place where you can do something really different, you can create something new. The question of how do we define queer cinema I think has been put to us many times in the course of this research. Project, yeah. It's very difficult. Um, we, I think, have felt that one of the most important things for us has not been to define it in advance and to open ourselves to the most diverse possible range of films. Because I think that a lot of yeah. people have a definition that then excludes some things from not being queer cinema. So we didn't want only films that represent LGBT people. We didn't want only films made by an out gay filmmaker because not everywhere in the world does that make sense. Um, I think. 
But at, at the same time, I think we were still committed to some of the things that we had learned from queer theory and feminist theory and in general critical theory about protecting forms of living and life that are under threat. So we were really interested in what happens when you live a life that isn't productive and valuable in the way that the rest of the world counts and accounts for things. And so I think that one of the things that we saw in a lot of queer filmmaking practices from around the world and particularly um, outside of the US and the UK was this desire to try to attend to and give value to, to ways of living and expressing and being in the world that weren't necessarily immediately seen as valuable by the larger marketplace of the world. Does that make sense? It does, and I think that we were we wanted to think about um, modes of filmmaking that are maybe seen as peripheral, um, whether that was about um, geopolitics, so looking beyond the West, looking beyond Europe, um, to queer cinema that perhaps was ex people wouldn't count as queer cinema because it wasn't expensive enough or um, it didn't follow a particular model of art film. So we've also looked at activist videos, feminist videos, we've looked at very flashy genre films, melodramas, popular, film. popular cinema, um, documentary. Um, so we wanted to have the most capacious um, possible definition to include people who weren't usually included. I think we're definitely in a moment where the idea of new queer cinema is a different moment than we are now. Maybe. I mean, I think, don't you think? I mean, I think in all the festivals we've gone to, there's a, been a sense that queer cinema isn't tied to a specific aesthetics. It's not tied to a specific identitarian form of po po politics and making politics. It's a balance because there is, I think, still value in thinking what does queer cinema do differently? Is there an aesthetic? Does, does queer film think about time differently or narrative or emotion? Um, do queers have different a different relationship to um, to subjectivity or to kinship or to relations with other people or to sexuality? I think these are still really important questions yeah, for film aesthetics. Yeah. But I don't think that there is anything as cohesive as new queer cinema anymore. And I think in general, cinema is about desire and erotics, you know? And so I don't think, I'm not necessarily, I don't know what you would say this, but I'm not necessarily interested in taking erotics and desire out of it. No, and, never. Um, but I'm not also, and I think we've tried really hard across the project not to reify um, the way in which desire is made visible in the world and to really think of that as a contested exchange between the screen, the people, and narrative and community, really. I think we're really interested in how, um, how new media produces screen cultures that intersect with cinema, and, and one of those ways is, is simply both of distribution and exhibition that we we find, we find queers accessing cinema yeah. um, through YouTube, through online distribution, um, and these are channels that make it easier for queers to watch films in parts of the world where um, it might have been very, very difficult for them to do so. Um, so we're really interested in thinking about platforms as, as a means of accessing queer visual media. Um, I think that's, that's really, history. really important. In yeah. history, like when Absolutely. we started, we were really concerned and also slightly ignorant about where queer cinema was in the world. And we realized there's this incredible archive of queer films from the Philippines from the 1970s that are on YouTube that, you know, everyone can watch. Um, so I, I think that's one thing. It's interesting how cinema has persisted as a form of social engagement and as a form of political practice. So old-fashioned watching movies in the dark together as a group doesn't seem always necessarily 
so unhip to young people. And as we've traveled around the world and gone to different film festivals, we've realized that it is really meaningful for people to still engage in cinema. I'm not sure exactly why, but it still seems to be like watching images in the dark and sounds in the dark together has a kind of erotics and desire hardwired into it that people continue to respond to, both from a personal level and how they think about themselves in the world, but also more broadly how they can how they form and construct community and their relationship with other people in alternative means and alternative forms. That isn't, um, that isn't in competition with, with YouTube or other forms of kind of social media. Um, I think sometimes in the West there, there's this narrative that we have the death of cinema and that everyone's yeah. doing things online. Whereas if you look at how you know a queer film festival is being put together in China, people are engaging with cinema and engaging with social media, um, and there's the narrative isn't one of competition. Cinema remains a really important part of of um, queer media scapes. For example, we learned in Manchester that one of the major queer film festivals in China gives everyone iPads and they ride on a bus together and watch a film together on a bus because they cannot use a public venue to do it. So, but yet something about the semi-private, semi-public um, quality of watching films together yeah. on the bus um, is really valuable. important, valuable, yeah. and tons of people come and want to do it. It's interesting to me how new media, and I think it's been interesting to us, has been utilized for this very, I would say, traditional form of consuming images together as cinema. And so I think it's broadened the like sort of technologies of cinema, but the idea of cinema is somehow still there as a as a kernel, as a central form.